One thing about Thailand, it is an excuse to get dressed up and look pretty fancy. Looking good, Mama. Papa and his bloody party shirt, any excuse to rock a party shirt. <laughs> but we also noticed a few bit of maintenance that need to be done, uh, which is why we did come to Thailand. And uh, maintenance on the sails. So there's a few bits of stitching, like a UV strip on the head sail, needs to sort of be re-stitched on again. So we'll take the Janara off. Has been a bit wet, so we've kind of been delaying this, this task, but we'll take the Janara off and take that into the sail maker, Rolly Taskers, and see what they can do. to share with you which is the sponsor of this video the Blinkist app they have over 5,000 non-fiction titles which have been compressed into 15 minute blinks it's perfect for people that love to learn some of the top categories on there are mindfulness health and science nutrition psychology philosophy, history, technology. So there's lots of different categories to learn from on there. I personally listen to it when I'm on watch at night time so I can be educated and entertained at the same time while I keep watch. My favorite blink so far is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. The subtle art of not giving up. I guess it was just really in tune with what I was going through at the time, but its main takeaway is that we put, we try to do too much and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, which leads to stress, anxiety, and unhappiness. And so it was just a real gentle reminder to prioritize things that are important to me in life so that. I can be happy. So I highly recommend that one. They have a new feature called Blinkist Connect, which means anyone that has a premium plan, you get two accounts at no extra cost. They're generously offering you a seven day free trial and 25% of a premium plan when you use this link in the description. So download the Blinkist app, give it a try and let us know what your favorite titles are. All right, let's go and get this sale down. Today. We've had to come back another day because it was a public holiday. We're just going to drop it off and just get him to stitch it up. So just laid the sail out inside here. How big is this giant find here? Bloody huge. It's just the umbrella that's sort of coming off. And uh, you know, Uncle was telling me a story about when his sort of stitching was sort of falling apart along the edges of his umbrella on the UV protection of his sail. And then you know, you got a 50 knot gale and it just ripped it right off. And so. It's just like the stitching that's sort of starting to come up, come apart now. Uh, and so you just want to get it properly fixed up because the sail is still in really good condition. So. <laughs> okay, finished? Okay. And then, um... Okay, and how long do you think? Two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh man, they said two weeks. Had to give them the old, that ain't gonna work, mate. <laughs> it seemed that my bit of Yoshi charmed worked as the head sail was collected only a couple of days later, putting her straight to work as we set off on a 300 nautical mile sail south down the Malacca Strait towards Malaysia. Being constantly on the move with no fixed address, it is difficult for us to receive packages in the post and after a year in remote Indonesia, we had some parcels to collect. Thailand also being a difficult country to have items imported due to the potential extra tariffs to be paid, therefore we decided to utilise the tax-free ports in Malaysia to send our parcels, meaning we are sailing 300 miles to pick up some packages. be back here ever <laughs> here we are back in Pankor Marina the marina where we spent majority of COVID where we've done our refit oh but we're getting Nanji ready to sail and after being in the water for over a year and a half Nanji's bottom was looking pretty bad and so if it's going to sell tomorrow or if we keep Nanji for the next three weeks the bottom we needed to haul out and the bottom needed to be painted so I've spent all day doing the most fun job of wet sanding the bottom but we're done. We're trying to do break world record speeds with in and out of haulage this time. So we're just gonna get out, 
down the bottom, do the tops tomorrow, then you slap some paint on and go back in in two days' time. Yeah. Who wants to buy an Angie? Day number two. It's a weird thing selling your boat. Like, especially when you love it. Because I guess people when they sell their boat, they sort of put it on the hard stand and leave it and forget about it, because I don't know, for one reason or another. But we're still living on Angie and like, still love her. <laughs> still want to sail her. Uh, she could sell, who knows when she could sell. There's a couple of people that are interested, but you know there's always people interested in when, how far that eventuates to, you just never know. Like, so it's just a weird thing selling your boat, because like, here I am cleaning it and fixing it up as if it was my own, but it could be sold next week. <laughs> it's, it's just such a weird thing. Like you could just whip it out and slap on a coat of anti power and like put it back in the water and you know, oh, she's sweet mate. But I don't know, like I just don't, doesn't feel right to, to do that. And I, I just can't take shortcuts. I need to learn to take shortcuts maybe. <laughs> but yeah, after a year and a half, you can see there's a little bit of growth on the side. And so that's what I'm getting rid of today. And we're gonna raise the water line just a little bit, maybe like an inch. We've always just eyed it with like with tape and uh, it looks good in the water and out of the water. But in the water, you can see that it isn't quite dead straight. It sort of dips down and goes back up again. And that's sort of where this green stuff has come across. And there's a line down here. I don't know if you've got that real keen eye, you might be able to see a little bump and dip in it over here my shoulder. So that's sort of the line that goes down. So through here, we're gonna raise it up like maybe even like two inches through here. Just gotta to try to get a nice, nice perfect round round shape. There is a little bit of a, a chip off the bow from where the anchor hits. So uh, I'll just put some epoxy primer on that and anti-foul it. So hence that's an extra reason why we're going up a little bit. So we'll go up with the waterline a little bit there rather than trying to touch up paint with the oil grip and a spray gun. Uh, as you accumulate stuff over time, the boat sinks a little bit further into the water. <laughs> <laughs> and so Nanji had sunk a little bit. Uh, now that we got all our stuff off, uh, she's definitely sitting a little bit lighter, but still gonna anti foul her with that higher line. So that's today's task. <laughs> We're trying to do this during wet season when it's sort of rain and it's sort of affecting the uh, speed of this in and out trying to get some paint work done. So they ended up just fully cleaning the top sides and mind you, it looks pretty nice to get now. Forget how beautiful Nanji looks when she's all clean and polished up and looking good. But I've dried off this, uh, this port side now, so let's try to, let's put out the tape and we'll try to raise this waterline a little bit so we get an idea of where it is because I'll still have to sand the paint below the, the tape and like feather in between where the old anti foul is. So still got quite a bit of sanding to do and we're meant to be in the cradle tomorrow night so I don't think that's going to happen now boys. But we just got to kick on so I'll put on, let's start this blue tape. Guess once it's raised that little bit as well there's like there's no going back because I've got a piece of 40 grit sandpaper here. <laughs> you got to feather out that little line between the paint job and the anti foul and then actually scratch that beautiful all grip so the primer attaches to it. There's no going back now. It's about as good as it's gonna get. It's gonna be bloody awesome. Oh yeah. 40 grit. Oh yeah. 40 grit. Well, there's no time like the present. And if we're gonna be in the cradle tomorrow night, we need to get some primer on. this opportunity to check out some of the other vessels that are for sale in the area. We'd spied online in a Mel Mango 51 foot sailboat that recently went on the market. With new rigging and new sails, it was worth us checking it out. 
Unfortunately, the broker is located on the other side of Malaysia, but we were given the keys for us to check it out ourselves. 51 foot is a lot of boat. Is it enough for our family? Still not. Can you lie down? You can't even lie down in that. Yeah, I can. It's just not. This is not. This is like a double bed. You know, it's not like a queen size or a king size bed. It's a double bed, which is kind of silly because there's so much space back here. The thing about the mango is that it's the one before the Maramu. So like, this boat is it's pretty up. Uh, and so the owners, the previous owners of this one have had it for 25 years, so it's like it's just been their baby. We are looking for a bigger boat and I know we're going to have to do a lot of work to be able to afford a bigger boat, but it's basically all these boats we're looking at is just seeing how much work I need to do. <laughs> yeah. First things first, we're in the cockpit and it's so big and roomy, like you can walk around here, there's lots of seating space. Um, I'm pretty sure you can reef and do everything from the cockpit which is so awesome and for safety, stability, comfort, speed. Um, speed. <laughs> These electronics are all pretty old. Yeah everything's OG, everything's original way. Eh? Like doesn't doesn't mean that it doesn't work but it's just yeah, How long is it going to work for? <laughs> anyway, let's move down. I, there's only three steps down into the actual boat, so you can, like, um, how often do you go down forwards into a mono hull? This is cool, three steps. Wow. It just... Wow. I'm, like, surprised at how, like, roomy this feels. There's heaps of storage space. Ouch. Wow, you can fit so much stuff on this boat. It's quite dark in here, but I love the headspace. Like, this has got so much extra room on top of me. I'm like 1.75 centimeters, so if you're like over six foot. We'll start up the front of the boat. Um, I've done a little bit of research on Amels, and they are almost unsinkable. So, the front chain locker is up there and this little part here actually seals completely off so if you crash into something um, that is going to make this room the rest of the boat watertight so if you had a big hole in the bow that's going to protect you there. The V-berth is two bunks and there's like lots of storage space on both sides. We could easily have crew come in here and live comfortably. They also have their own bathroom here as well so one thing that is difficult, well, that I don't like about it is that they don't have an actual shower. It's just a, yeah, like it's just a wet room, I guess. I believe from the ad, uh, all of the rigging has been replaced last year, so that's definitely a pro. A massive a Massive pro because it's quite heavy rigging. <laughs> the bigger it gets, the more expensive it gets, so. Stowage up front. Yeah. Lines up front, you don't need to walk a long way to the back. There's a lot of boat going forward. Love the solid rails. And they also got this design for like for downwind sailing where you're not 100% sure how it operates, but it's something to do. Reducing Put whisker them. poles out the side here to help reduce the roll downwind. I'm not sure how it works, but. Good idea, Sounds pretty good. Downwind <laughs> rolling sucks. <laughs> as many beds and bunks as there are, we're still kind of missing a bedroom. We want Tallulah to have our own bedroom, the crew have their own bedroom, and we have our own bedroom as well. What are you thinking so far? Well, uh, it, it could be a really nice boat. You know, but what scares me is that everything is original, so everything's old, so everything is going to break sooner than later so everything needs to be replaced like like the motor scares me there's rust and stuff on it same as the jenny you know like everything probably works it is really clean in there still could be a good boat it's just whether or not you're willing to invest it's a lot of money to, it, it, it definitely could turn into an amazing boat but i just don't think we have the money to to buy it and then to buy it and fix it no way well that's the Amel Mango 51 foot, um, she's a beautiful boat, she's built for ocean crossings, she's heavy displacement um, and a well proven round the world sailboat so um, it's very exciting to actually step foot on one of those, we loved, like it's got so many extra safety features that most boats don't have and uh, I really love the cockpit design, it's really comfortable being in there and you felt very protected with the high walls and 
yeah, so it was really interesting boat. The things that let us down is the fact that there's only still two cabins on the boat despite it being 51 foot. And we're really looking for a boat with three cabins. Also something, I know it's getting picky, but I really wanna have a shower room. Like Nanji has a shower room, but for our boat, I wanna have a shower room where I can actually go in and just stand under the water. There's just a few things that weren't quite right for us as a family. Um, it is advertised for 155,000 US as well. And we do, if we were gonna buy a boat at that price, we'd want it to be absolutely perfect. This boat did have um, a lot of cosmetic things inside that needed doing and I think it's been on the hard stand for a while as well. So, although this boat ticked many of our boxes, there were a few that it wasn't quite ticking. So we are going to keep the Amel in our back pocket, in our back of our minds as we continue searching for the perfect boat. We know that the perfect boat doesn't actually exist and you have to make compromises. So we will keep the Amel, um, like I said, in our back pocket and on our minds, but we're gonna keep searching further. So fingers crossed.